So The Last of Us, HBO's live action series adapted from the hit action horror video game, made some waves with its episode last night. I'm talking about the third episode of The Last of Us season and its introduction of two characters, two familiar characters for The Last of Us franchise, Bill and Frank. Today on Fraud on the Telly, I'd like to tell you all a story. The story of two people who found love and commitment in the most unlikeliest of situations. So in the Last of Us video game after the death of Tess, Joel decides to take Ellie to the town of Lincoln to seek help from one of his associates, Bill. Bill, you see, has been living in this small town of Lincoln for many years, only he and his partner, Frank, being the only survivors of the town. Bill's paranoia and aptitude for building things kicking the two alive as much of the town has been littered with booby traps as well as in the video game, the town is littered with the infected, a tactic Bill uses to keep other human survivors away. In the game, Bill's paranoia is one of the strongest parts of his character, even mistrusting Joel and forcing him to show him that he has not been bitten when you meet him for the first time in the game. Even as going far as to have conversations with himself or playing chess by himself. Joel has come to Bill to cash in a favor, mainly a vehicle for him and Ellie, so they can finish their journey. After much arguing, eventually Bill agrees, telling you where the parts you need to go to get for the car are. Besides Bill's well quirkiness, he has a strong desire to be left alone, attempting to turn Joel away as soon as he arrives, despite their long-standing relationship that we learn about in the game. At first, glance, Bill is this rather odd, strange man, one seemingly filled with contempt for his fellow humans, a man who has lived alone and with paranoia for so long that he's come to mistrust everyone and everything around him, and the mere presence of another living human gives him more anxiety than the hordes of undead that surround him in his hometown in the video game. Well, you see, that is until we meet Frank. After being attacked by infected while searching for a car battery, Ellie, Joel, and Bill find themselves in one of the many abandoned homes in the town of Lincoln. Joel and Bill begin to argue, but they are suddenly stopped when they notice a body hanging in the middle of the room. We learn that this was Frank, Bill's longtime partner. According to Bill, one day after years as partner, Frank finally had enough of Bill and his paranoia and his strange actions, stealing a bunch of his gear and heading off on his own. It seems Frank, though, didn't make it very far as he had been attacked by an infected, choosing to go out on his own terms instead of becoming one of the mini mindless horde. Next to his body is a note in which Frank tells Bill that he hated his guts. Bill is physically and emotionally taken aback by this, but he tries to do his best not to show it. But here we get a real glimpse into the truth of this man. The man who wanted nothing but to be left alone now seems saddened at the prospect that he truly is alone. Ultimately, Joel and Ellie end up acquiring and fixing this car, leaving Bill, who tells them both to get the fuck out of his town, to which we never see him again in the video game. Now, a lot of people may be surprised to learn that, well, Bill and Frank weren't just partners. They were partners, friends, lovers even. The game isn't super on the nose about this, but while searching Bill's house early on, Ellie finds something interesting, a dirty magazine that seems to point towards Bill's preferred sexuality. But it's really this scene when Bill finds Frank's note and reads that note that really gives away the true relationship and the nature of the true relationship between these two men. In the grand scheme of things, Bill is just a small, interesting side character in a greater story, while his partner Frank is really only mentioned in a handful of lines. Yet the impact Bill and Frank have in episode 3 of the live-action show of The Last of Us is just wow, man. Episode 3 of The Last of Us largely focuses on these two characters, Bill and Frank, and their story within the universe and their story together as people. The show flashes back 20 years to the day that the infection began to spread. Citizens of a small town called Lincoln are being evacuated to a quarantine zone. We see a shot of a house with multiple cameras outside, followed by the shot of a silhouette of a man in front of a number of TVs. You probably already guessed that this is our main man, Bill, played by Nick Offerman, best known for his role as Ron Swanson. Bill anxiously looks up above him as we hear sounds of soldiers walking as they clear his house. The sound fades away and Bill watches as they all leave, the lights coming on in his secret underground bunker, which we see is packed with guns, bullets, and other supplies. 
With everyone gone and the town empty, Bill begins to get to work, collecting supplies and setting up defenses, as in no time Bill has created a tiny little infected free paradise in the town of Lincoln. Throughout these scenes, we begin to learn a little bit more about Bill and how he's definitely more than meets the eye. While a paranoid conspiracy theorist and a compulsive doomsday prepper, Bill also seems to be a man of taste as we see him prepare a meal fit for a fine dining restaurant, steak, wine, and all. Four years later and Bill is still living in Lincoln, having built an electric fence that surrounds the town. The town has become a tiny slice of safety within this hellhole of a world, and Bill has seemingly developed a routine. A routine which is suddenly interrupted when he realizes that one of his traps has been triggered. Meet Frank, the sole survivor of a group who has attempted to journey to Boston. At first, Bill is highly skeptical of the man, which is to be fair as we can assume that Bill hasn't had much contact over the last four years with his fellow humans. After confirming that Frank is indeed not infected, Bill attempts to send him on his way, saying if he feeds him, then the next thing he knows, he's going to have a line of people out his door that want to be fed. Frank promises not to tell anyone, with this kind of genuine helpless look on his face, the face of a man just happy to be alive and communicating with another human. And it's here we see for the first time a crack in Bill's hard demeanor. Bill lets Frank use his shower, gives him a new set of clothes, and even cooks him one of his signature gourmet meals accompanied with wine, something that Frank really takes note of as it doesn't really seem to be in the nature of this man, at least at first glance. The two finish their meal, Frank declaring after some awkward silence that he should be going. But first, he'd really like to play Bill's antique piano. Frank searches through some of the sheet music, commenting that many of these surely aren't Bill's type of music, to which Bill replies that these are his mother's, until Frank plucks one of the booklets of sheet music out, declaring that this, this is you, as Frank poorly begins to play a rendition of Linda Rodstad's song, Long Long Time. Bill stops him halfway through, to which Frank stands up, asking Bill to play, saying that as soon as he does, he will leave him. Here we are treated to a very surprising, heartfelt and emotional scene. Bill sits down and begins to play a very soulful, mournful rendition of this song, a staggering difference from the clumsy version that Frank had been playing before. There's some real strong imagery going on here. Long, long time ago, you see, is a song about love and being loved. An incredibly sad song about yearning for love, but yet never receiving love. And Bill's performance of the song, I feel like really captures the meaning that the song has for him, as it feels as though Bill is singing about himself in the song. This is the catalyst for Bill and Frank's relationship. Frank asks Bill who the girl is that he's singing about, as it's rather obvious that Bill is singing from some kind of an emotional deep place. Bill responds that there is no girl. Frank replies, I know, as he leans in, the two men embracing one another. Fast forward three years and we see Frank and Bill having a bit of a couple spat. Frank wanting to spruce up the town so the two could entertain guests, these guests ultimately being Joel and Tess. We follow their story over the span of 10 years. Bill and Frank befriending Joel and Tess, Bill reluctantly coming to somewhat trust the two, while Frank is ecstatic at having made new friends. We see Bill and Frank repel an attack by raiders on their town, Bill being shot, forcing the roles of caretaker to be reversed as now Frank must take care of Bill. We travel 10 years through time, both men growing older together, Frank slowly losing strength, slowly dying. One morning, Frank decides that this day will be his last. He tells Bill how he would like to spend it, ultimately ending with Bill cooking a nice dinner for the two men, where Frank tells him that he'd like Bill to crush up his pills, put them into his wine, to which he will drink them, and he will go to sleep forever. The day plays out, the two men enjoying a fine meal together, eventually downing the wine at the same time together. It's then that the realization hits Frank. Bill had spiked his own drink as well. Bill explains to Frank that he's old and satisfied with his life, saying, you were my purpose, as the two men head off to bed together, falling asleep in eternity forever. Not long after these scenes, Joel and Ellie find their way to Lincoln, eventually making their way to Bill and Frank's home. They find a letter addressed to Joel. In the letter, Bill says to Joel, I'm going to reveal something to you because you're probably the only one who understands it. 
I used to hate the world, and I was happy when everyone died. But I was wrong. There was one person worth saving. And that I did. I saved him and protected him. That's why men like you and I are here, Joel. We have a job to do. I leave you all my weapons and equipment to use them to keep Tess safe. The two pack up, heading out in Bill's old truck. Ellie finds a cassette tape in the glove box, which she pops in. Slowly we hear the voice of Linda Rodstadt singing, long, long time, growing louder as our episode ends. The Last of Us is an adventure horror story about the zombie apocalypse, but in reality, it's really so much more than that. First and foremost, it's a story about people and the relationships they make and the challenges that they face in this insane world. Bill and Frank's story is one of commitment. You see, relationships aren't static. They change over time. We see the journey of Bill and Frank emotionally, the highs and lows of their relationship, the spark, the arguing, the disagreements, and the fear of loss. The realization of what a person means for you and what they do for you. The Last of Us does an amazing job of showing the emotional journey of a couple and really of just two people. The different way love changes through a long relationship and ultimately a story of how two people found meaning in one another in the backdrop of this absolutely insane world. While Joel was ultimately unable to keep Tess safe, Bill's words still ring true as it further kind of encapsulates ultimately what will be the relationship between Joel and Ellie. As in the grand scheme of things, the story of The Last of Us really is a story of healing, a story of growth and development between these two characters, Joel and Ellie. When I first sat down to make this video, I wasn't really sure exactly where I wanted to go with this. In the modern media landscape we live in, people are too quick to shout out woke culture at something that they just don't like or find different or uncomfortable for whatever reason. I don't doubt that there's going to be a section of people who cry out, look at how they're ruining the last of us with their wokeness. Something that personally I find hilarious, seeing as these characters really had always been a gay couple. As well, the story that is told of love and commitment really has nothing to do with the sexual preference of the two people being told here. The message is universal, regardless of how you swing. Bill and Frank could have been a heterosexual couple or a lesbian couple. The story and how it's told and the meaning taken from it is irregardless. It's the same. Honestly, this episode really left me lost for words and took me completely by surprise. The Last of Us showrunners somehow took the story of two relatively minor characters and expanded upon it for a beautiful result. Like I said earlier, The Last of Us is not just a zombie story or an adventure story. It's a story about people, man, and their love and their pain. And I think that nothing captures this more than this episode and this amazing performance from Nick Offerman. This was the story of Bill and Frank, two characters who went from nothing really more than a footnote in kind of a grand story to an integral piece. The story of change and love and commitment. The journey of two souls together pushing through whatever comes at them in this life and the next. As always, if you enjoyed the video or learned something new, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I really look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts on episode 3 uh, of The Last of Us in the comment section down below. As always, guys, I hope to see you in the next one. Stay safe out there. Make sure to love each other. And until next time, peace, love, adieu. It was young love, young hearts were so pure We trust love, is so hard to endure A few years passed, made the move out west It became harder to maintain, it put us to the test I hope you know I did my best Every birthday